Hello guys and welcome to a, another build video, this time for my Magicka Sorcerer. So this is going to play really similar to Electrocutioner, the build that I uploaded recently. That is not the gank based Sork, that is the stable double pet overload Sork. Um, I'm going to explain all the concepts again, so don't worry if you didn't see the original build. But with the patch that's come, there are a few changes we've had to make to this build to min-max it again, get it a position where you can properly sustain, keep the burst up, a bit of adjustment in the CP accordingly, and just a bit more time playing it to learn some of the strengths and weaknesses of the builds in general. So, if you have not seen this build in action, because there's always someone says, There's no clips, Blabs! Where's the clips at? It's a simple solution. Go onto my YouTube, go into my montage video section of the playlists and look for the one that is Templar and Sork and you'll see this play style played the same. It's very close to the same build, it's not the same but in principle this is just an adjusted version to help with some changes that were made to the class and game in general. So, the build we are using, we are using as follows. One Dommer House, this is for Magicka and Stamina. The food we're running needs, we need some max Stam. Max Magicka is perfect in a pet based playstyle because your pets increase in damage based on Magicka. It is the piece to go for. And we're running a Triglyph on that. We need some Max Stam. Previously, we were running all Magicka Glyphs and Immovable Pots. Immovable Pots took a big nerf. So now we have to find our Stamina sustain through other sources. Bam, there's the other source of it, Bloodspawn Epaulets. Now note that I'm using 7 Light. This is really useful in a pet play style. You've got a lot of expensive skills and 7 Light helps sustain a lot. You do lose a bit of damage, a bit of sustain, but in the end it's, sorry, a bit of stam um, sustain, not match sustain, obviously. But it's really worth it for the match sustain that you gain. Everything is in pen, by the way, in terms of sets, I wouldn't run any other trait. I don't think it's worth it. Um, the extra stats you get are just not worth losing that crit resist for when shields are down. So, other 5p sets spread across the body is Necropotence. We're using Magicka, 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 Magicka. Just that one triglyph. I could run up to three and have been known to run up to three triglyphs depending on situation. In no CP, I would heavily advise three triglyphs because stamina could be quite tough there. Neck potence gives us all that magicka when our pets are up. Realistically, you're going to have pets up all the time, which is perfect. And I'll explain exactly how we're going to use those pets in this playstyle shortly. We are then using, as before, five pieces of elegant. This goes onto our jewelry and our front bar weapons jeweled. Our main hand is nernhoned. Our off hand is sharpened. I'm going to calm my pets down real fast. They're being annoying. So the reason you want your offhand as sharpened is your back bar weapon. So your, your offhand weapon doesn't get a full buff, uh, buff of weapon damage. So Nern Hone is going to give you a percentage of weapon damage, which is not that much. Penetration works out better damage for the offhand. So you want to put that there. If you somehow are reliable with lights, you could technically run infused. I would not suggest trying that, to be honest. These pets are annoying. Calm down, pets. I've called you off. Come on now. Behave. There we go. Our main hand then is Nernhone, as mentioned before, and our glyphs are as follows. Weapon damage on the front bar, because if we are going for the burst, we are going to get that light off. And our back bar, as per usual for my dual setups, is stamina steel. So this is basically when we do some damage, we are going to get a bit of stamina back. Ooh, but your offhand... Darling, you're so generous. And I forgot again. Hello, Locked YouTube. Um, that generally doesn't proc too easily because it is your offhand dual. You're not really ever going to heavy attack. The reason I always put that as my offhand is if you're heavy attacking, the only time you're gonna do that is if you're short on stamina and need stamina. Bam, why do it? You want stamina, so a bit of extra always helps. Our off bar, as before, is also the Master Ice Staff. Note that this is Nernhode. You actually want infused with a Magic Steel Glyph. Um, it's just on my DK at the moment, so let me quickly show you exactly how that works. We go on to Master's Ice Staff. Just by here, infused magic still exactly the same as the stamina, but infused it's worth about 300 regen. I've talked about it in a lot of my previous builds, so if you don't understand how that glyph works, I might even make a video talking about some best glyphs and all. It's likely I will discuss that in that. Really nice one to have. This one actually isn't bad. Nernhorn Frost is probably going to be your second best option. The reason Frost is nice is that Chilled really helps snare, and that's quite useful for connecting your pets with faster targets. But yeah, it's kind of down to what is your preference. Run what you want. You do not want a Fire Staff. You do not want a Lightning Staff. I will explain that in a second. Our food then is Clockwork Citrus Fillet, and we are using Essence of Detection for Major Sorcery, Max Magica. 
The crit is not that important compared to detection where I think you can have some problems because we're going to have crit on our main execute bar anyway. So you want to have that stealth detection for Nightblades. There are a lot of Nightblades in this patch. Stamblade really strong with some of the changes made to Magic of Decay. Okay, that's the basics talked about. Last few basics then are we are using the Mage Mundus, Max Magica. As I mentioned before, is pet, bread and butter. We are a vampire. The extra sustain is quite nice. We're decent stamina and magic recovery, so why not? And also, generally speaking with shield, you have slightly better time against that fire and Dawnbreaker stuff, so it can be quite nice. Anyway, on to our stats then. We are 47k Magicka. I'm going to have to mute my audio because we have so many people using the stream to visit. God damn my stream. We are using 47k Magicka. That is without Mage Light. You'll see a bit more when I hit my overload bar. 22k health, 12k stamina, 2.4k unbuffed spell damage, though that will go up dramatically, obviously, again, when we hit that overload bar. Uh, 2.3k magic regen. We have a lot of reduced cost though. I'll show that in a sec. And 1.1k stamina regen. Crit resist obviously pretty high. And that does us fine. Our jewelry then is recovery, recovery, reduced cost. You could also run recovery, reduced cost, reduced cost. Adjust that down to your preference. Depends how much you're using skills. But you do have some other stuff to help you for sustain. I'll show you in a second. Anyway, that is just sets, stats, etc. That's not the obvious bit. Actually, none of this is obvious. This playstyle is very complicated to understand. I'm going to pre-warn you. If you can master this, and I've not seen anyone yet master it, you will never regret learning this playstyle. It is amazing burst, amazing sustain pressure, brilliant sustain. Without a doubt, the best Sork style I have seen, played, etc. I love it to pieces, but it is tough to master. So if you're not experienced, take your time with this build. It's still worth learning. If you ever want to learn the class, this is going to be a prime example of the hardest of the hard. And learning from harder down to easier is going to make your life very easy in this game. But it's tough. Our skill bar. I'm just going to tell you what the skills are and then we'll explain our combos. So we're using streak. This is mobility. Get us away from our target. Don't spam it maybe more than three times. It gives you a chance to regen because it does get more expensive. But if you do want to move away, you can use that a few times just to move away. I use the ball of lightning morph. So you don't want to stun. It's another reason we're not using the ice staff. Again, when I explain the combo, you'll understand why. We go for Ball of Lightning to protect ourselves. It can also protect you from Soul Strike, Meteor, Frag, Reach, a lot of common stunts at the moment, so that's quite a nice one to have. And it's also going to give us that mobility. Fury is our Execute, pretty key to our combo in the way this build plays. Hard and Ward is our first and main shield. Very big shield on that, 10.4k in PvP. And that is without Mage Light, even bigger on my Overload Bar. And then both of our pets back to back. And Overload, we are using the Energy Overload Morph the other one is kind of crap. So this one basically gives you a magic return when you hit with it. Really nice. It's actually a lot of sustain for that, especially when we're playing it so often. Um, it is a bread and butter to our normal DPS if you've not seen this playstyle before. And it's also going to be our kill, basically. On the back bar, then, we are using Daedric Prey. So Daedric Prey is going to buff the damage of our pets, which I'll explain in a second. And it's also going to give us a large explosion at the end of it, which is key, again, to our combo. Frost Reach is basically our sustained DPS, a bit of pressure, but more importantly, it's a very obnoxious route. We're trying to control our enemies for the burst, and it makes a big difference. Harness is our second shield. So in a pet sort, you've already got really good shield size. You don't really need to go dampen. I think the sustain overwhelms it. You can go dampen if you want to. Feel free. I just prefer this. Then we are using Volatile Familiar and Twilight Matriarch. So, again, these have to be double barred. They're toggled stats, but they are still worth it. So the Twilight is a heal. We are running Distro and Jeweled. We have no Resto staff. We need a heal. Oh, darling, you're so generous. Screw you, stream. Behave. Hi, YouTube. There's a video Go to be made here. SM Zeroification on YouTube for oh. epic SOPVP videos. Don't check him out, he's a wanker. Twilight Matriarch is going to be our bread and butter base. Heal, more importantly, is going to be able to heal our scamp. It's needed to heal that scamp, otherwise the scamp is a bit volatile. Um, can't die. Actually, speaking of volatile, that is the name of it, Volatile Familiar. But hey, so how the scamp works is I basically set it on an enemy. I'm going to set it on one of these bastards that's following me. And then I press 4 and it does this pulse that does a lot of damage. And that's basically it. So that's how his damage works. I'm going to show you how the combo itself works in a sec, hopefully on these guys, if they behave. But it is really, really sexy to do. Um, Shay, you can turn sub only off. It's fine. 
Our back bar ulti finally is barrier. That is only there for sustain. I've probably cast that twice ever, just when I thought I really could save myself with it. But it doesn't make a massive difference. It's really just to help you sustain. And it's basically based on this passive here. Um, I talk about it a lot. Combat med. No, not that one. This one. This one. Increase the magic recovery by 10% for each support ability. I wouldn't go for another ulti there. I really think that you only want to burn ulti on your overload because it is essential to your combo. Let's show you the combo. So let me pre-warn of, pre one of these fools to take the damage. Let's go for Sinner. He looks pretty high health. So how our combo works. This is difficult to understand. Firstly, to command your pet, all you've got to do is a medium attack or you can set a command key. So if I do a medium attack, you'll see my pet goes onto him. That's the first thing we'll do in a fight. When we put our pet onto him, Crumpet says he's ready. All right, we'll go in. That sin is here as well. So we put our pet onto him. We're going to cast four, two skills. In this case, could we reach shield? We're going to go curse, reach, skill, one more skill, fury. And then we're going to switch to overload bar. And as the stun hits, you're going to get an unblocked overload. And that's the first combo. The second possible combo is to do the same minus one skill. So simplifying that down, we cast the scamp. Two skills, doesn't matter which. Curse. Three skills and a fury. Or two skills and a fury onto overload bar. That is where the kill comes. If you get this perfect in timing, which can take time and generally works better in a real fight because you've got defense and things going on, you will stack absolutely ridiculous damage in one second. So let's do this. One, two... Burst, one, two, Fury, Overload, and Nuke. And that's where you're getting that stack of damage. I don't know why I didn't get a curse. Some bastard purified him. God damn this game. See, this is why you just can't get the test dummies these days. One, two, switch to Fury, Light Attack Fury, Overload, he gets stunned, and he's dead. Even with that. It's a really nice burst combo. Again, if you want to properly understand this combo, I suggest you watch the Templar video. You want to see it in a live example, better still catch me on Twitch to watch it there and ask me any questions. But that is the combo itself. I hope that sort of helps explain. It's complicated. Anyway, moving on finally to our CP. So our CP are as follows. There is a fair bit in the CP that you really want to get right. 61 in Warlord to reduce our cost of break free. Pretty important. We don't have that much damn. Lower the cost. 16 into Sprinter. When we are kiting, and I will show you my overload bar, we're going to use one skill to maintain our stamina there. So that's important. 43 in Stamina Recovery, 64 in Moon, uh, in Arcanist, sorry. They're basically boosting your sustains. 56 in Tumbling, again, big Stamina save. Basic stuff, really. Um, nothing much else. On the Reds, then, 66 at Bastion. You don't really want to go more, but this is a great spot for it. You need a big shield. It's going to shield you. It's going to shield your pets. It's the way to go. And then, again, always the same. Anyone who watches my videos knows my setups are very similar in this CP. 37, 37, 37. It can vary a bit. Generally speaking, you're going for 37 in Hardy, 32 in Elemental Defender. It doesn't matter which way, but 37, 32-ish for either of those. And anywhere between 37, 40, or 44 in Fixed Skin. I use it on almost every class. In this tree, 7 in Crit Resist. We don't need that much. We've already got all in pen, and our shields are taking a decent amount. And 56 into Ironclad. It's nicer to stack these just to try and mitigate the damage on your shield rather than increase the Crit Resist. But in our traits, we don't have that option. Hence, we go for the in pen trait. Finally, in the blue tree, 20 in Thaumaturge, a little bit because your pets do get a bit of damage extra, but not much else does. 66 in Master Arms, we need that direct damage, we need the extra spell damage, hence 56 Elemental Experts, 66 Elfborn, stacking heavy into those because our burst damage from direct is very high. And then 32 in Spell Pen with the extra points, the healing isn't too important. That's pretty much it. So... Final thing to show you then is my overload bar. It's cheeky gets that are watching the stream kill my pet. So our overload bar is as follows. There's only one skill you could change here. Mage Light, you need it. It's to guarantee, well, not guarantee, but help your crit chance Ooh, on your overload darling, bar. Darling, you're so generous. Behave yourself, guys. Wankers usually like to project their reality onto other P able by calling them wankers. Illu. Hmm. There you go. Life advice from Melesmo for you. Inner Light is going to give us our crit chance on the front bar, extra magicka, and it's a lot of extra magicka. As you can see, we get about 3k from it, so a chunk of extra damage there. Shield, you want to go for Harden, it's your bigger shield, it's cheaper. And then you've got Volatile and Twilight, you don't want them to de-summon when you go on Overload Bar. And last but not least, Dark Conversion. 
I've swapped to this for the extra match sustain. Because we've got that stamp sustain, if we're not heavily pressured on stamp, it can be nice. But there's plenty of options to run here. So you could go for... Uh, what else could you go for? You could go for Ruin Prison if you want a backup CC. You could go for Mines for defense in case if you're in a group. You could go for Bound Armor for extra magicka. If you could somehow get it on, Surge for a spell power buff so you can change your pots. You could go for Boundless Storm for mobility. There is a lot of different options available to you on that front. But the combo is simple, guys. All you got to do is cast a Scamp. The Scamp is a preemptive CC. So when you cast it, you know the CC is coming after the pulses. Two casts. Curse. That way we're going to guarantee the Curse at the same time as Overload. Two casts or three casts, depending on the fight rotation. Fury. Overload swap. Overload. It's that simple. It does take practice, but you will not regret it when you master that playstyle. I really want to see some people rocking this build because I am decimating on this consistently. And I'm sure there's players out there can master this and get really good. I'd like to fight against it and feel how it feels. So please, get this build rolling. Good luck to you on the build. I hope this has been helpful. I think I've covered everything. Race. Breton is probably going to be your best choice here or High Elf. Um, I like High Elf for the extra Magicka. Breton's going to help sustain. Both are pretty good. I wouldn't go for anything else. Good luck with the build. I'll see you in the next video. Um, it should be another top 10 sort of thing. So helping some people with some guides.